Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Drew Meyer with Meyer Construction. Um, this video is going to be on some key tips on uh, coping some baseboard. Uh, just a few tricks I've picked up. The first thing is you're going to want a good coping saw, which I broke this cardinal rule. I forgot mine. This is just an old one from the shop. Um, <clears throat> you can flip the, the blade around so it cuts on the pull stroke. Um, I like the real fine tooth blades. So once you have yourself a good coping saw, I like to uh, work with a longer section of trim. It's just easier to kind of hold down. Um, some people will want to clamp it down once you get to the point of coping. The method I like to do is kind of a miter method using your miter saw. Okay, so first off, you're gonna cut your inside miter. And so once you cut your inside miter, you can take your pencil and put the flat of your pencil lead and just go on that profile and that kind of highlights your cut line. Now what I do is I'll flip this board over, <coughs> leave my saw set up the same way, 45 degrees, just flip my trim upside down and I'm gonna use my miter saw and run the blade right here till I get to this profile. I've found this really just expedites cutting. You know, any straight part of your profile, you can just run that with your miter saw. You can actually, if you take your time, do the whole thing with your miter saw. You know, you move the trim as you go, which is just very time consuming, but you can be done, or it can be done. So what I'm gonna do is flip my, leave my saw set up the same way, flip my trim upside down, So now you can see, I'm gonna bring my blade down, line it up, so I bring my blade right down to the, my paint line. What I'm gonna do is take this all the way down to when the radius starts. So as you can see, I could have took it a little further, but now what I'm gonna do is use my coping saw. So I just set up right on my miter saw stand. And if you want, you can clamp. You can clamp it down or just use your hand. And I usually kind of like to hold it and brace my finger on the blade. And I'll typically start at the top and um, Another technique is if you hold your finger, like this is always a delicate spot that'll break. If I hold my finger right at the top and put pressure there and start my blade, and you wanna, like I usually leave a chunk and then come back and get that with my knife just so I don't break that top. But you always, you wanna keep in mind um, when you're coping to keep your, wanna also back cut it. Um, so keep your coping saw angled to back cut it and what I've found that works good um, is really focusing on a steady up and down and not so much of a pressure into the cut just really up and down um, very gradual movements and that'll keep it from getting caught up you see how I'm going very gently really moving up and down So, get you a better view. So, and like some guys will make relief cuts, like you could start either up here and work your way, or if I wanted to come in in the bottom side, just bring your coping saw right in at there, at your intersection. That way you can get that out of there. Take your time. And 
you can see how it bound up there where I kind of slowed down. So that's the main thing is just, you know, moving fast um, and using gentle pressure. I like to hold it just like this. It's cutting on the pull stroke. And this is the point where you gotta be very um, careful because I'm about to bust this piece off. But if you're not being careful and this and your coping saw flies forward, you'll break the tip off. So slow down. And I'm about to connect these two cuts. And I know it's about to break off. So I just take it off with my hand because I've done it a lot where you're going and then you finally catch and your coping saw flies forward and it'll break the tip off. Now you can see I left quite a bit of material right here. That's because on this profile of trim, if you go really thin right at the top, that'll always bust off. So I learned from a guy to um, leave just a little bit of meat there. And then where you ran your full trim piece, where you're coming into your butt end, what you can do is actually notch a slight little piece up in the top of the profile in the flat and get that to receive receive this little chunk. I'll still take it down a little bit, but I like to leave a little meat there. So then you can take, you know, your utility knife. That's why I like Ulfas with a longer blade. And these knives stay sharp a long time. Then I just slowly work my way in here. And you can see my finger on the top is supporting the very top of the piece. I keep my finger on top there. Now I've seen a lot of guys put a Collins coping foot on their setup, and that's definitely something I wanna buy. Um, you need a barrel jig, uh, jigsaw. Uh, that's definitely in my wish list. Just for, you know, that way you can cope very efficiently. Um, a guy I worked with, or a guy I worked for before, he had a Dremel tool set up and would use a Dremel tool that just creates a lot of dust. So if you're working with like MDF, I would highly recommend resp respirator and um, eye protection. This last winter, we were working in a shop uh, with poor lighting <clears throat> and it was all MDF uh, base we were running. We were getting right down on the miter saw to, uh, to be able to see the cut line. And then we were taking a Dremel and when we were coping and using that also. So just a ton of MDF du dust. And um, I have never had an issue with it before and neither had he, but I think it was the fact that we were in a shop, it was closed up, we were right down on the saw due to poor lighting. It was just a, a bad deal. Um, we actually both had to go in to the ER that night and from all that, uh, the formaldehyde and the MDF, MDF dust, um, it actually had burned our eyes, our chemical reaction, and it was one of the worst uh, pains I've ever had, the ER, and they gave us eye drops, but basically they said that's how that dust can get in your eye and just irritate it because it's um, MDF, has formaldehyde, and that stuff's really toxic. So I try not to work with it um, at all because they say it off gases even in the home. I tell the homeowner that and say, hey, you probably don't want this in your house off gassing. You're going to be breathing that. Um, so that's just kind of a warning heads up to any of you guys out there um, that work with MDF a lot. I'm sure you know the dangers of it, but just for anybody that was young and dumb like me, if I can save someone from damaging their eye, getting injured, going to the ER, it's just kind of my story. So now when I work with MDF, I wear a respirator, I wear um, <clears throat> safety glasses, 
have a vacuum set up, plenty of air, and I just try to avoid it all together. <clears throat> but there's kind of a little story for you. So there you go, simple profile coped. Now I'll go install it. And like I said, the way I do it, I leave a little bit of meat here on the top and then I'll notch the receiving um, end. And that works well for me. So thanks for watching today. There's a quick video on uh, some tips to coping. Um, hope some of that helps somebody. So that wraps up today's video. Uh, thanks for watching. Once again, uh, Meyer Construction, please hit like, uh, hit subscribe and keep hammering.